Creativity is an addiction. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity. Totally uncut because we all make mistakes. So let's turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. Hey, this is Arrow, and this is Vocal Defrag. Defragging is asking the questions and questioning the answers. We all go through so many different mental transitions. We have mood swings. We have mindsets. We're set in our way. But do we really understand the reason and the purpose behind such a decision that you've made? Because there are so many people that say that they're miserable in life. Well, if you're miserable, let's figure out why. Ask the question, be truthful with yourself, and then question the answers. I happen to call it defragging. I keep a written journal, which I've been doing for, God, since November of 2017. And then I switched over to a vocal defrag because my goal... And what I heard in my heart is, is that you're not going to give your journals for everybody to read and they're not going to come to you to read it. But what you can do is you can help share the way by speaking the straight, by being very open and honest with what vocal defragging is all about. Ask the questions and question the answers. And it's not an easy task because when you sit down to do it each day, it becomes a discipline. Well, I'm not in the mood for it today. Or like in this moment, if you can tell, I've got vocal damage. I've got some pretty bad vocal damage. And I did write in my my journal of defragging that I probably would not speak. And the reason why is because of the vocal damage. And I don't know how you're going to receive a frog on this side. But something did come to me while we were in this beautiful forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina. And it really comes from a conversation that I was having with my wife this morning. Uh, Because I was uh, sick yesterday, pretty bad, I didn't report to work. And the reason being is because, A, I had vocal damage and my job happens to be one that involves my vocals. B, I also had a high temperature and I didn't want to give it to anybody else. Well, she asked me today, are you going to go in? And I said, I have to go in. And the reason why is because my temperature is down. I'll wear a mask. And she goes, here's the thing, dude. You're going to be that employee that guests are going to come in. They're going to see that you've got watery eyes. Your nose is running all over the place. You're not going to be able to wash your hands every second of every moment. You're going to be that employee that's going to give them a bad image more than a great image. I said, whoa, that's one hell of a guilt trip. And my my reply to her was pretty simple. I said, I I understand where you're coming from, but I don't want to face the guilt trip from a manager on duty and co-workers that go, did you go to the doctor? Oh, we were the only people here. We needed you last night. We needed you. See what I mean? It's the guilt trip. And that's going to be the subject today on vocal defrag is that why do we allow other people's guilt trips to control the way we walk and live and the one reason why is because you know what we always want to do one thing allow others around us to feel better about themselves and did you know that guilt tripping is a form of manipulation and that when they do guilt trip us into doing different things that they're winning And so, in all honesty, we're enabling them. When we fall to our knees through guilt tripping and they get what they want, that's exactly the reason why they're going to continue doing it. They know that throwing out a guilt trip is going to get them what they need in their life. So, the best way to handle a guilt tripper is to say no. And I mean no. But how do you do a situation like I'm in, and I'm sure you have been there too, where the people that you love... They ask you very politely, why aren't you staying home? A second day of rest would be absolutely phenomenal for you. And if you go in, this is what people around you are going to think. Versus the boss that I know for a fact, the moment they see me when I walk through that door today, they're not going to believe that I was sick. And yet you can physically hear me right now. These are vocal cords that are being challenged because that's what happens. In fact, I even looked that up yesterday. Why is it your vocal cords take a hit when you have the flu and and the cold? And the one rule that came through pretty clear was because when you aren't feeling well, your vocals are badly damaged because you are pushing them into play. So how do we deal with guilt tripping? A. Don't be a guilt tripper. If you guilt trip people to get your way, then you got to play their game too. You got to allow them to guilt trip you. So I think it starts with self. We know that it's a form of manipulation. 
Stop guilt tripping other people when you need things done. Don't make them feel uncomfortable because something they're doing doesn't feel right or isn't right. So if you stop guilt tripping people, it might be the open door for them to stop guilt tripping you. Just something to work on. Be aware of how you act and react around others when you're trying to get someone to do something. Don't try to belittle them. Don't try to put yourself in a situation where one thing is going to make somebody else a winner. I I believe in the theory that we should all be equal. All people equal. Boss, employee, a new hire, whatever. But if you're going to use the power of manipulation in order to have what you want in your life, then what you need to do is you need to look at yourself first and find out if you're guilt tripping others before they guilt trip you. I'm Arrow, and that's Vocal Beef Rag.